We're broadcasting live now. Let's go. I, I do want to remind people of something. Uh, but that Jan forgot to tell you. And he's got a limited amount of, of uh, CDs up here. And it's basically the service that he just did. He's got a few CDs. If you want to grab those, feel free to grab those. And uh, he's got his business card up here. I say it's rightly divided, explained on Facebook. So there's some cards up here that's going to let you find him. But specifically, those CDs, is it CDs? DVDs. DVDs up here of the service he just did. So I would highly recommend that you get you one of those copies if you, you know, specifically if you don't have Facebook or something of that nature. Come on in, George. And, uh, okay, we're broadcasting live. Let's go ahead and kick this out. This song right here, Dwight Mount wrote the thing. And so we're just going to see how it sounds with all of us. It sounds great with him, but, you know, whenever you get a bunch of uh, part-time musicians, they don't know what it's going to sound like. But listen to the words of it. It's really, really good. Okay, let's go.
turn to, I want to turn to, let me look at it real quickly. I'm going to start. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Well, Jerry used to preach on this a lot. And I started thinking about that verse. Is it just one part of this verse I'm going to read? Verse 1. Having therefore these promises, Dearly the beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and all and all But having therefore these promises, and he hasn't finished writing yet, more to come, more glory to come. We have so much for us available in the body of Christ through the promises, through the, the wonderful words of Scripture, the edification, exhortation in Scripture for us, and it's all completed. Think about those who were in the first century and didn't have a Bible, didn't have the words written down, and yet they were excited to hear what they heard. They were glad to receive it. And yet we have a book that's finished, completed, perfect, uh, God finished it and read it, wrote, wrote it down in our language, and it's uh, per, uh, the perfected Word of God, preserved Word of God, and so many times we neglect it. And that's just to, to our disgrace and our detriment because it's God's Word. Turn over to John 6. So the Lord Jesus Christ was here on earth and he walked around and he marveled so much at Israel's unbelief. But look at what Jesus said about his words. Verse 63, John 6, 63. It is the Spirit, though it is, that quickens, that makes you alive. It's the Spirit that would keep you alive. Without the, body, the Spirit, the body is dead. It is the Spirit that quickens, that makes you alive. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, the spirit quickeneth, and they are life. The words that Christ speaks, they are spirit, and they are life. Turn over to uh, 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14. Verse 37. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Amen. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Yeah. And that's sad. Christ's word is here in this book. When Paul says, follow me, He's not following this man, this fleshly man. He's following the doctrine and the words that I say. I saw this play out in Jerry warned me. You're going to see things like this. But I <clears throat> started sharing with the man, right dividing, the word of truth. And it was really a basic story of one uh, right dividing. And then I got to this point where, you know, that Christ wanted his disciples to follow him in the flesh. Paul told us to follow him. Brother, he popped the cork. <laughs> No way! There's no way we're supposed to follow Paul. I said, well, not the man, Paul. The words he said, and he couldn't handle that. Now, this is the man that told me he was a Christian. He told me to say he was a Christian. And on and on, he was a church tender. He was just separated from his wife. He was having problems with her. I was concerned about it, wanting to get back together with his wife, trying to encourage him. And uh, I took him to a dinner, shared some things with him, then tried to share more right in the body. And then when I said, we need to follow Paul, and when he said the scripture, he popped that cork, and he couldn't handle it. Oh, there's no way. And this was the, be careful what you say. I'm going to follow the words of Jesus. Uh. Well, two weeks later, he was living with a woman who wasn't his wife. <laughs> and uh, it was a sad thing to see. Because I wanted him to get back to, with his wife and his family. But you better be careful. I'm going to follow the words of Jesus. We couldn't follow if we wanted to. None of us can hate our parents and follow Christ. In Luke 14, if you hate not to follow father, mother, sister, brother, your dog, everything else, you need to and come follow me. You cannot be my disciple. And that is cannot. You cannot be that disciple. It's impossible. You've got to learn to forsake everything. He was trying to prepare them for the face 
what was coming up. That's what to get you prepared for the seven-year tribulation. If you don't follow me and sell everything you have and focus on one thing, getting through it and holding out to the end, then you're going to sell out. You see your children starving over there? Give me the mark. I'll take it. I want to feed my family. Give me the mark. I can't take it anymore. And if you hate not your father, mother, brothers, sisters, and children, oh, that's hard to say. But they had to get through it. He was preparing them for it. And the Christian will never see that because they won't write by the word of truth and they never won't really want to see that. They just want to put a burden on you and say, you need to uh, take up your cross and follow me. Well, good luck. There's a couple people who have taken the cross around the world. I understand that they're doing it and some really sincerely wanted to share Christ, and they have. But think about it. We're not, we're not to carry the cross. We're to glory in the cross. All right. Is that what I'm going to talk about? <clears throat> anyway, turn over to John chapter 2. Oh, by the way, uh, Dan, I don't know where he's in, but you don't need to worry about that tail freezing over thing. The Astros are ahead two to one. <laughs> if they win, hell's going to freeze. <laughs> you know what the Astros used to be called? Before the Astros? Oh, come on. Colt 45? Remember? Yeah. Such an unpolitically incorrect term. I kind of like it. So it's a start shooting. Baby. Start shooting. All right, John chapter 2. Look at verse 23. That's what I was thinking. We were thinking the beer. So what? The beer called 45. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I know what your mind is. Guilty as charged. That was Volvo too. That was, uh, it was pistol, uh, real life uh, 45. That's Texas, buddy. Now, Texas. you got to think Texas. We still uh, ride horses, too. All right, 23. Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, this is Christ, in the feast day, many believed in his name but when they saw the miracles which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. And he did not that any should testify of him, for he knew what was in man. Takes you back to that passage in Jeremiah chapter 10. Is man does not know what's inside his spirit, really. He does that because it's devious. It's off track. And he didn't have to tell Christ what all about it. He knew what was inside man. Look at chapter 3. Here's most of our problem that we're dealing with in this world today. When you kind of share the good news of Jesus Christ, here it is. Verse 18. He, now this is obviously the theme of message, but he that believeth on me is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the Son, a name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world. Here's our problem. Men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. That he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. Men love darkness rather than light. You can vouch for that. What's going on around us today? When good is evil, and evil is good. All right, look at chapter 5. Look at chapter 5. Look at verse 39. Now, brother. Uh, did this uh, passage, but I want to keep going. Search the scriptures for them, them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. Amen to that. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. Ye won't come. Unbelief. That's a problem. Unbelief. We trust Christ. We believe in the gospel. Turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, and as we have received mercy, we thank not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, 
not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, committing ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, and whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them because they didn't believe, because they believed not. They chose not to believe. I did a massive study on atheists. I found out an interesting thing. You know they weren't born atheists? Not a lot of them. Most of them had a religious, bad religious, good religious background. Amazing. And they came to the conclusion that there is no God. Or I came to the conclusion there is no God. But not one of them said, I was born an atheist. I was just, it was find it fascinating. Somewhere along their 20s, they came to this conclusion. There's been a couple in the last uh, 10 years that came to the conclusion in their late teens. If I were to tell you the name, you'd kind of, uh, it kind of makes sense. And it, it, like Ben said, this is, is a, it is a heart problem. Or, uh, another gentleman that uh, teaches with me on Sunday mornings, Doug, <coughs> <laughs> That's a great thought. No, he preaches every, every morning, every Sunday morning after me. We've discussed it a lot. It, it's just a, a heart problem. I just don't want to believe. I don't want to believe. I think there's a couple of things. Why? Number one is they love the darkness rather than the light. And this is one thing I've always held. They fear judgment. Think about if God is alive in their mind, I have to face the judgment. It's almost an instinctive thing that we know we're going to get judged. One of the most atheistic actors in Hollywood you said it so well in his lines in the movie, I'm getting what I paid for, I'm getting, I breathe when I'm so, I'm doing what I should have done, I'm getting paid for all my sins, and he's an atheist, but it's one of his lines. But it's so true, they feel the, fear the judgment. So what's the best way to get rid of the judgment? Get rid of God. But if you go that route, then what's the use of uh, doing what is right? If there's no God, there's no judgment, then I can do anything I want. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's sad to say that God has made it so plain and clear about who He is in so many ways, and yet we reject Him. Turn over to Psalm 19. <laughs> Again, you're outside. I don't know if you heard that. Uh, that hill freeze is over. The answer was back. I think it's getting. I mean, they played tonight. They may be winning tonight, and it's getting cold. The answer may win. So, anyway, Psalms 19. All right. Look at verse one. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world, and them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. Think about it. Every morning you see a glorious sunrise, or a burnt orange sunset. If God wasn't a longhorn, why do you make the sunset burnt orange? <laughs> I'm just kidding. But it's just some of the most beautiful things you see. All right. Some of the most beautiful things you see are just the sun coming up in the morning. I was up on the uh, 20th floor of this building I'm working on, and, and uh, uh, I was coming around the corner and just the crop of the sun was coming up, burning bright orange. And of course, ran to the edge and took a picture. I've got very much phone. And beautiful picture. And I'm just watching it come up. And I was just thinking of that verse. The glory of God. Just wow. And I look around and I see us as human beings making conscious thoughts. And the atheists or the idiots in science are saying that we came from the guys who dragged their knuckles. And it just makes me uh, amazed. 
You, you know why we have, uh, I, I weigh 290 pounds, 95 pounds. There is a chimpanzee that's 195 pounds that I saw a picture of, and he's chasing another one, and there's a raccoon in the area. He's going along, and he grabs a raccoon, and just like that, just like the, without a thought, just throws it, and throws it almost 60 yards. <laughs> I'd have to think about it, maybe I could throw it 20 yards. Why is it so different? He's 195 pounds, and I'm 290. Why could I throw that thing 60 yards? God designed the nervous system different. That was what I found out so fascinating. Our nerve endings and our nerves are different. It's designed, we're designed to be real, I can sew and do those things. If they did that, they'd crush the needle. It's the way they're designed. God designed it, and it hasn't changed. There is no middle in between something from between chimpanzee and man. I mean, you and I know that. But why would the obvious evidence be so clear, and yet they refuse to believe it? They choose not to believe it. It's a matter of heart. I don't want to believe. Turn over to Romans chapter 1. There we go. In spite of what we're going to share today, I still am amazed. Why well, won't these people see this? I still want them to see the truth of God's Word. I want them to get saved and trust Christ, come to knowledge of the truth, and yet they won't do it. And I know I say it in Scripture and see it, but I still say, come on. And why come on? I'm not going to hit a few times. Wake up and, uh, and see the truth. Romans chapter 1, look at verse... Uh, uh, let's just start 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for if the gospel is power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed, and that gospel from faith to faith. I almost often tell people to listen, when you say faith to faith, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith to faith, faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God, your faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Your faith grows as you hear the word of God and hear it preached properly. Your faith grows and grows and grows. Faith to faith to faith. Think about when you first started hearing the truth of God's word. I was overwhelmed. I said, I sat in those uh, at uh, the chair up there in the front, and by the second hour, my head was in full of uh, spaghetti. I was trying to absorb so much and try to kick a lot of the Christians uh, out. And, and, re and sort through it. But it was overwhelming at times. And I just, wow, this is so much. That's why I got the tapes and had to go back and listen to them because it was, had to hit it over and over and over. I had to go back to the 1 plus 1 equals 2 in type math structure because I was taught wrong. And I had to hear the truth of God's Word and unlearn some things and go back to the basics. And then once I got it, went to 2 times 2 and 4 times 4 and on and on it goes. And growing in the faith, and as I shared earlier, that funnel begins it gets bigger and bigger and bigger as your faith grows, as you trust the Word of God, believe it, listen to different preachers. Brother Jerry introduced me to several different preachers, teachers, and he said, keep learning, keep listening, keep searching, and don't take the word for it. Listen, hear it, and let it out for yourself. I think you said that almost every week, which was a good thing because it teaches us to rely on the scriptures. You might correct me when I read your word wrong. Praise the Lord. It's just, it, we need this book to have that, that, as I drew earlier, that straight line of truth, our guide. The truth to live by. Faith to faith. Faith to faith. All right, let's continue on. For, uh, for it is written, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which that was, um, sorry, which made made me known of God is manifest in them. For God hath what showed it unto them. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God. Remember those atheists, at some point in time, there was a thought in their mind, there is a God or whatever, and they start reasoning among themselves, they do this. They glorify Him not as God. Nah, He's not God. There's no God. Neither will be thankful. 
but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Light rejected brings darkness. What happens when you turn out the light? It's pretty dark. <laughs> Especially when the lights go out of the building. I was in the building one time doing the lights we were working on, on a special area in the um, new part of a hospital. On the other side of the wall is the surgical units. And uh, they're doing surgery at 9 o'clock in the morning. And we're at 8.30. And we're doing the special light lighting sequences and on this new parker adding 8.55 I can hear the machines crank on as they're starting start to do the uh, blood circulation, getting dirty. And guess what happened? It went pitch black everywhere. Everywhere. This master electrician did a no no, <laughs> and the generators didn't come on because of the backups. And you can hear the beep, 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 beep. <laughs> the batteries kicking in on the machines next door. Of course, some panics were going on, but it was pitch black. I couldn't see. I couldn't see this far. And also, where, where's my flashlight? We got to get to that generator. And then some guy came through the hall screaming, "Where's the generator? Kick on!" <laughs> Just, oh no! Thank goodness nobody was hurt. It was pitch black. I could not see. When that light went off, there was nothing I could do. I could. I, I couldn't go anywhere. I was up on the ladder, twelve feet up in the air. I just couldn't do anything. And. Uh, so I'm glad the other guy has it on. The beep beep started going back. So I don't like hospital sounds anymore. That was scary. Anyway, let us continue on here. So that they were without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not a God. They were thankful to King their machinations. Their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Think about everything you have ever heard throughout your education that's been proven false over and over and over again. The first group of uh, evolutionary charts, the first chart that I remember, it was all made up. It was The Piltdown Man was a pig tooth. Made, a man was made out of a pig tooth. The cro Magnet Man was completely made up, a fabrication. The whole thing was false. This, this global... This global thing. False. Do you realize the Lord already draw a line of sand and see it doesn't go any further than that right now until the time comes of the judgment, I mean the seven year tribulation when things start going crazy? It's do you know why there's hurricanes? Because there is what do they, what does the uh, hurricane throw up in the atmosphere when it's spinning? Come on, I don't know that. Eat. Temperature. It's temperature right? It gets too hot. A hurricane throws it up in the air, cools itself down. Just read the article that line today, oceans are cooling. It's amazing. Just cycles go through. There's no reason to panic, folks. Just keep preaching the gospel. These people on the left, the loonies, the loonies, the things that are going on, oh, you're going to die if you drink too much coffee. No, you're not. Yes, you are. No, you're not. It's been going on I guess, as long as I can remember. Cheers. When I was in uh, 20 years old, I was sitting with a carpenter, going to a job, and we were listening to the radio, and uh, the same thing that I'm hearing today, I heard back then. It, nothing has changed. This is getting worse. And it was about, we've got to get straight to our school, we've got to do this. The youth are going to her, held in a handbasket, and everything else, just going crazy. Uh, we've got to get this president out of here, we've got to get a new president, we've got to get Congress this, this, what, going crazy. It's the same thing. The food is harsh and darkened. There is nothing in man to guide him along. Until you get back to the Word of God. Remember your that line with truth. Here's your standard. But man is just gone off here. Oh, we can make it work. <laughs> yeah, we can make it work. Sure we can. <laughs> right. they have been trying for a long, long, long time. And it's just not going to work. And then man's going to get rid of all these Christians. They're going to get wrapped out of here. And then, uh, oh, let me fix it now. And in seven years, if God doesn't destroy the days, all flesh will destroy itself. This it takes seven years. Wow, that's amazing. All right, turn over to Matthew chapter 13. Uh, 
uh, verse 53, and it came to pass that when Jesus had finished his parables, he departed thence, and when he was coming to his own country, he taught them there in the synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence hath this been this wisdom and this mighty works on the ghost? And uh, verse 57, and they were offended in him, but Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works because of their unbelief. Look at chapter uh, 17. In verse 20. Verse 19. Then came the disciples to Jesus' part and said, Why could we not cast him out? Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. Uh, I can go on. There's a lot of them passages of unbelief. Uh, look, at, look at Romans 3.3. 3. Romans 3.3. Three, three. Or this bring, bring one right first. What advantage then hath the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? Much everyone chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. For what if some of them did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? No way, Jose. God forbid, yea, that God be true, but let every man be a liar. And the only thing that goes there unbelief. Now turn over to Romans chapter 9. There was an advantage of being a Jew. He's going to amplify it here. Uh, verse 3 of chapter 9. For I wish, I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ, for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises, whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came. He was a minister to the circumcision. And who's overall? But what happened? God gave him all these things, gave him the, the ability to be the priest of the world. They blew that. Then the Levites became the priest, and it just seems to go downhill from there. Gives them the law. They dance around like God said this morning, completely naked, like idiots and fools. They just said, We're going to keep the law. And it didn't take but what, 40 days, and they're out there dancing around. Get rid of this generation. I mean, he sends 12 men to the promised land that he's told them from Abraham the promise, this is your land. And they had that promise passed down to his son Isaac, Isaac to Jacob, to the 12, and on and on he goes. Joseph believed that promise. He said, when you leave this land, take my bones and because he's going to come back and see you. They get to the promised land on the edge of it, sends 12 men in there, and ten of them come back with a bad report. It says in Exodus that 600,000 men left Egypt along with a mixed multitude, which includes a lot of people who were in Egypt saying, I've seen your God, I want to go with you. It seems like he's the one, so they go with them. They go out of Egypt, God sends these ten in, and ten come back with a bad report, and they want to stone Joseph, I'm sorry, um, Joshua and Caleb, because they said, let's take the land. God's given it to us. We see the fear, fear of God in their eyes. Let's take it. No, we're too big. We're like grasshoppers. We better go back to Egypt. And they've been whining about going back to Egypt since they got out of Egypt. And why is it if people that get out of bondage sometimes want to go back to bondage? You've seen it. See, this truth, oh, this is so good. Like you said, they come, we're going to come back next week. Where are they? They're not there. They run back to the bondage. The leeks and the onions, so to speak. It's a sad thing. It's unbelief. It's unbelief. As a result, God, because of their unbelief, then said, and said uh, since you said, and I like the way the Lord talked to Israel, you told me that you were going to keep the law, you told me you could do it, and you were going to, you told me that since I brought you to the edge of the land and, and I can't get you in, I'm going to take your children in the land, you're going to die and rot in that wilderness, and that's it. And he did. That generation went away because of their unbelief. And the people who said, We're going to die up here, our children, he took their children in. You know, be careful how you talk to the Lord. Sometimes he talks back just the way you talk to him. He loves us. And I'm thankful for the Lord. He speaks through his word, and sometimes it's pretty hard on us because we see ourselves before we are. There's a problem with unbelief. You've seen it, and you've seen others with it. 
don't let it creep up because it's like the, I tell people in our fellowship, Satan is looking. And you already said this many times, he's smarter than we are, stronger than we are, but he never sleeps. He's looking for that, and as on a building, when you see a crack prematurely, what do you think? You've got to watch that crack, make sure it's not a, on the main line. But it's, uh, he's looking for a crack. What happens when you put a high power washer on the crack? After a while, it'll start to widen. We, uh, we saw a whole valley and gorge open up in less than four hours in <coughs> 2002 when the uh, Canyon Lake uh, overflowed on the spillway. I, I drove out there to see it. It was so phenomenal to see a whole section of land just wiped out and a whole new river created uh, some places over 60, 70 feet deep through rock in four hours. And I went out there and I was hearing all these people and we're all going, wow, wow. And I overheard two people who says, makes you wonder about these people who think the world evolved over a million years. <laughs> <laughs> or, or the rivers were formed in millions and millions of years. We see this in four hours. White, I mean, just completely cleaned out and a brand new river section formed. And it was amazing, the power of water. Once the unbelief. The unbelief is something that will creep in. It's like a cancer. But a cancer that can be defeated if you get back into the book. That's why these preachers and teachers are always warning to study, 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 read, read. Listen to, uh, if you have a hard time comprehending, listen to the message again. I've already committed myself to listening to several of these messages again because I want to hear the things when I went, huh, and I missed that word or whatever, to hear that word, hear it again, and hear the whole context of the message. But that's what I did with the beginning. When I didn't grasp it all, I'd re-listen to it again, and re-listen to it again. And did I hear this right? That if we study and trust in the Word of God, that God can make things happen in the ministry, that it glorifies the Lord Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Because you get in His Word, you're honoring the Lord Jesus Christ. God will have all men to be saved come and come to, know the, uh, come to the knowledge of the truth. That's God's will. I was at a little place one time. Shouldn't have been there, but I was there with a group of people, and they were always, oh, I need to find the will of God. And Oh, man. It was just milk toast, soft wet. Oh, my goodness, please. First, let me I interject something here. God's will is so simple. God would have all men, will have all men to be saved, comma, and come to the knowledge of the truth. God wants people to get saved. So your mission, if you're a secretary, you're a laborer, or whatever, what, I went down the line all our station saying, you have people all around you that are lost. They need to hear the gospel. They might want to hear it. Look, look for an open door. Look for the opportunity. Look for it. God will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Some of you love what you do. You're, and they were worried about they were, I don't know, uh, being selfish for lacking their occupation. Who cares? Do it. Lost people there. God will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. We just them there. Get them saved. Whatever. Well, that's not really what we're talking about. We want to get right with God. Well, if you trust Christ, and of course, please don't say anymore. Uh, <laughs> 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 it's just like the biblical prayers. <clears throat> I'm just so violent, I know. <laughs> All right. The Lord hates violence. Psalm 11 says the Lord does not like violence. Now, unfortunately, I want to give him a few hard knocks. So, it's just the lunacy of people that don't see the truth. It's because of their own unbelief. It said in Romans 1, their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Turn over to chapter 1. Again, read it. God does not delight fools. A long time ago, we were discussing these things that were going on in the world, and uh, what's the number one thing that God hates? Amen. Because uh, someone said, it's got to be abortion. No, it's pride. Pride. The first thing that happened, because all this to start, was this guy said, I will be like the most high. I will, I will, I will, I will. A created being saying, I will be like the most high. Yeah, right. He tried. A created being saying he will be like the most high. That's 
school of Lucy of pride. Pride means you start thinking some things that uh, are just crazy. You think you're invincible, invulnerable, or whatever it might be. Pride goes before a fall. I'm living proof of that. That's why this nose is crooked. I promise you. Don't do it. I tried to cheat a red light. My pride. I could beat it. I met a Dodge pickup going 35 miles an hour. Running across the street. So anyway. Alright. Where did I tell you to turn? First Corinthians chapter 1. Look at verse 20. One. Slow down. Huh? Slow down. Oh, slow down? Too you sent us to Romans. I did? Yeah. Where do you want us to go? My mistake. Okay. First Corinthians. All right. I gotta add another word to the fat old crazy uh, fat old man is fat old crazy man. The word and it's the fat old crazy man. Alright. Verse 21, for the after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. They won't do it God's way. They don't know God. So God's going to make it just simple enough and against the grain of man's kind's pride. It pleased God by the sophistication, foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Think about some of the movies you've seen about Christianity when there's always some kind of preaching on. Someone screaming and whatever, or they're always singing, uh, shall we gather at the river? <laughs> Trying to demean Christian people. They're the most loving people I've ever met. Um, it uh, please God the foolishness of preaching saved them that believe. Foolishness of preaching. It's God's going to choose the foolish things of the earth to confound the wise. God hates pride. That's why I, <laughs> when, that, when that man stood on the cross, Man, there was everything stripped away, and it's to the world. And so, why do you think that God is going to not have a problem sending people to hell to reject His Son? Mm -hmm. You rejected my Son, who did all this for you. <laughs> it was just too humiliating, right? That's exactly how God wanted it. It's humiliating to say, I have nothing of myself to offer. I have to completely depend on Him for salvation. A man who was condemned and he was innocent. Put on the cross, back laid with many stripes, carried his own cross, fell under the weight, bled and died, and yet he fought, did not fight back. If I was there, I would have been trying to do something to get away. Or be crying out that my, I'm innocent. He was innocent, and yet he said not a word. Not a word. He did it for us. And the religious system is going to condemn you to say, see, you need to be worthy to be like this man. No, it's for the love of Christ that we do everything we do. When we know, by right dividing the word of truth, what he did for us. I had heard Christ died for my sins, but through right dividing the word of truth, it expanded my knowledge completely the whole gamut of God making us righteous in Christ because of what he did. That God took us. Look at me, man. He saved me. And he saved a sinner that needed a savior. Uh, I, just as bad and no better, no worse, but I was need, needed a savior. He did it for me. He did it for you. And he didn't deserve that. He was innocent. And yet he uttered not a word. Pilate marveled. Aren't you? Oh, give me something. You're not. You're not guilty. I know it. <laughs> As Mike knew it. Don't have anything to do with it. Righteous man. And he, oh, man, we gotta get, get this guy out of here. He's he's just something's wrong. And and when Pilate said, "I have all the power to do it," you don't have any power unless it was given to you by my Father from above. Ooh, man. Pilate was even more determined to release him. But he listened to the crowd. It was God's determinate foreknowledge and plan to put Christ there. Yeah. At that time, it was for the nation of Israel. Yeah. But thank goodness. <laughs> I'll just put this as the secret. Hidden God. That that was for Israel. He was wounded for our transgressions. All those things there. And then, boom, chapter 9. 
Uh, blasphemy or get saved. Wow. There's the start. History changed. Prophecies put back, pushed back, and yet here it comes. And it's coming towards us. You know, the first thing that happened to Paul the, uh, on the road to Damascus, he got blinded, fell to the earth, brighter than the new day sun. He's a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He's a smart guy. He says in uh, 2 Corinthians, though we have known Christ after the flesh, shall we know no more. But he said, though we have known Christ after the flesh. I think, this is my own personal opinion, that when he was on the ground, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Who art thou, Lord? Please don't be Jesus. Please don't be Jesus. Please don't be Jesus. Please don't. I am Jesus. Who thou you ever see those domino things where the dominoes start clicking? He's a Pharisee of the Pharisee. He knew the law, knew the prophets and all. I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. I think that the dominoes just click. Oh, no. I, would, I probably said something else, but oh no. <laughs> this says trembling and astonished. Why was he trembling? Fear of Jesus. Why was he astonished? He's wrong, but what was the penalty for him doing what he did? Yeah. Yeah. He's still alive. <laughs> Trembling and astonished. I fear. Oh, I am Jesus. Oh, no. Okay. I'm still alive. What were you happy to do? <laughs> think about it. I think I'd be the same way. Shown, I think you saw the mercy and the grace to a certain degree. And after God showed him more of the message, whew, man, thank you, Lord. Think about the Gentiles who heard this message. Wow, what good news, what good news that we can have that all them that believe are justified in all things which you could not be, uh, uh, be uh, by justified by the law of Moses. It's a good message. It's foolishness to the world. And we're just going to have to accept the fact that this world is loco and they will not believe. Think about the Pharisees who confronted Jesus. These people knew the law, knew the prophets. Jesus asked them, which of you convinceth me of any sin? What if he waited around? Huh? I mean, I'm just adding to it. What if he did? Which of you have convinced me of any sin? Come on. Not a word. Think about this. He told them, I'm going to raise this tabernacle in three days. They told Pilate, at, at Vlad, that knucklehead said he was going to come back from the dead. We want to secure it. Secure it. You know how to do it. You have a guard. A trained guard, by the way. They go out there and they get trained. They're, out there trained and they go out there and they guard the tomb. Three days later, this uh, bright angel appears and they fall to the ground as dead men. And then this roll of the stone away. You hear that? Yeah, I heard it too. Uh, then these two ladies come. Did you hear that? Yeah, he's, done, he's alive. Don't move, don't move. <laughs> Those men get up and run off. They go back to the Pharisees. You know that man that you put in the grave that you said that wasn't going to come back to the dead? He's out. He's alive. They roll the stone away. And this other, angel, this other man, I think he's an angel, I'll see his light. Uh, he said he's alive. He's not here anymore. Just like he said he would. Uh, what would you think the Pharisees say? Praise God, man. Let's go find out who he is. <laughs> Matthew 28 says, How much money is it going to take you to shut you up? How much money is it going to take to shut you up? Think about the unbelief there. It says the love of money. Let's shut you up. The truth. Shut the truth up. How many dollars? How many dollars will it take? 20, 20, 100, 200, 1,000? I don't care. Let's shut you up. You see the hearts of men against the truth of God? See the hearts of men out there in this world against the truth of God? See the hearts of men inside the church, the church is, against the truth of God? How much would it take to shut you up? For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. And it breaks my heart to see that because... 1 Corinthians chapter 3 is that judgment where it's gold, silver, precious stones versus wood, hay, and stubble for those who are saved. But like
like Dan said, what about those who know the truth and rejected it? I think they do get skewered a little bit harder. harder. It's a, uh, you know, there are judgments, different levels of it, but think about it. It's unbelief. We've got to fight against unbelief. But what's the best way to fight it? Right here. Just keep hitting the gospel. I shared with the Jehovah Witness one of the couple came in. It was two ladies. And they came to the door. I pulled up just in time to catch them. And I started sharing the word with them. And they said something derogatory about the Lord. And I said, He is the living God who died for your sins. You have no eternal hope. And I, I just eyed on her. You have no eternal hope. Do you realize that he died for your sins? There's nothing you could do to save yourself. This lady started crying behind her. She said, I'm doing the best I can. Ma'am, I understand exactly what you're saying. I tried so hard to make myself good, but it did not work. It's and then she the other lady started saying something. I said, It's not about it's only by his right, uh, sorry, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us. She said something else. I understand. And she said something else. I said it's because it's not because of our righteousness. It's because of his mercy he saved us. Not by works of righteousness. I had it better down then. It was about 15 times I said that. And then she said, what do I do? You need to trust Christ. The other lady pulled her and said, let's go. <laughs> I tell you what, you get in her face sometimes when they insult your Lord and said, you have no eternal hope until you trust Christ. Do it. Unbelief is going to be out there, but you have the Word of God, the most effective tool, offensive tool to use. Use it. Okay? Thank you so much. Let's take a quick break. Come back in. we got some people that's uh, going to be preaching now. It's been preaching for a long time. They've got some great messages.